Hi, this is Joe Masabni with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension at Dallas Center. Uh, welcome back to my series on the Dallas Vegetable Garden. Today's presentation is April 8, 2022. If you have been watching the, the series of shows, you know that I inherited a 50 by 60 garden. And instead of having to deal with this native soil, which is heavy clay and take and and uh, with weeds, I thought in my wisdom to bury the weeds uh, with uh, one foot of compost and the alleyways with one, one foot of mulch, and that will take care of them. Well, it took care of the annual weeds, but here the Johnson grass, you see this little bit in the, in the alleyway, that, that's not covered yet with compost, or with mulch, I'm sorry. But here in this corner, uh, this weed is uh, growing everywhere. It went through one foot of compost here, so my bed are four foot wide and the alleyway is two and a half foot wide. Uh, the, this weed went through uh, this one foot deep and started and uh, so uh, hindsight is 2020 uh, what I should have done is put cardboard at the bottom of the bed everywhere really even in the alleyways uh, so that uh, that cardboard will act like a physical barrier and nothing will grow through that so now I have to deal with it for uh, uh, forever this, with these perennial weeds uh, so what I have to do is uh, manually weed them Uh, so what I did here, you see these three beds already cleaned. This one here on the left has not been cleaned yet. Uh, and I used a long nose spade or a trenching spade that I borrowed and I'll show you the video. So this video will show you how I pulled these weeds. I borrowed a uh, trenching spade or you can use any uh, long nose uh, spade or even regular spade. And, you know, you can see just uh, push that spade all the way in. And when you lift that soil, you're pinching it or snapping it as deep as possible. And then now you're getting as much as of that root depth instead of just pulling it uh, by hand at the soil surface. Okay. Um, which will come back. When you, um, uh, when you pull the weeds by hand, that's how much you get. But with the spade, look how much extra. You get six to eight inches extra. This here, this here tiny plant that you, you get by just pulling on the surface, that's, all, that's gonna come back. This is uh, the last growth, you know, like a couple of weeks of growth, or three weeks. But when you pull at that mature root, uh, that you're going to delay that plant coming back uh, by two or three months. So let's watch this video. In, in a, let's say in a month or and two weeks. And that's the difference. This is you, pulling you it, it by the hand at the surface and then this using your spade. That's going to delay it. Any extra depth, you, uh, length you get of that root okay. with the spade uh, is a bonus and would delay that weed from coming back. If you remember, this is the design for the irrigation system and the rest of the presentation is, is uh, talking about this. We had a 4x4 four four panel here which will have on it the uh, uh, backflow preventer and the fertilizer injector and the irrigation controller, uh, which would be run by a solar panel, 
a tiny solar panel that doesn't use a lot of juice. That controller will control four manifolds uh, like a solenoid valve, okay? Because each valve will control one zone. So we have a three quarter inch tubing going only for this area to control these four beds and one uh, PVC pipe three quarter inch uh, going to this zone and this zone. So I have four zones and that's why I have four solenoid valves or four valve manifold that will be controlled by the, uh, by the controller. So, uh, so I can uh, irrigate zone two. I can irrigate zone two instead of zone one separately, all four at the same time. Uh, this uh, will be determined by the program that I will set in the controller. And the controller will instruct uh, the each manifold to open or shut any one. Now I also put a ball valve at the, at, uh, the end of each bed. This way, if I want to uh, irrigate uh, one bed differently than the other three, let's say I planting a fennel and doesn't need as much water as tomato in this bed, then uh, I can turn off this manually when the other three are uh, uh, irrigated. Okay, so this is the trench. Uh, back here is where that board will be with the valve and the controller and the fertilizer injector. You'll see it later. So we did this by a trench with a trencher and then the trench that are on this end of the beds and on the, on the other side, uh, we dug up, uh, we dug those up by hand. Okay, and this shows you the PVC being laid. This is uh, the start of uh, like coming behind me is the controllers and in front of me going towards the vegetable garden. Uh, and uh, right here is the stub coming up from that lateral line going for each zone. Uh, so that's what that is what I mean here. Uh, the, so this is zone one zone. You see PVC going uh, for this zone, a PVC line, two of them going for the other uh, two zones on the other end, and here's the fourth zone. So four lines going, and each one attached to its own solenoid valve. And uh, so this line here is attached to four of these here, one for each bed. Uh, and uh, uh, I dry fitted the parts that I need uh, using, you know, the elbows and tees. All of this is three quarter inch and a ball valve here. Um, so my bed is four foot wide. So what I wanted is this first uh, line is six inches from the outside. So six inches here and then one foot and one foot and one foot and then six inches uh, uh, here. That gives me four foot wide bed. So I have four lines, irrigation lines, one foot apart. Uh, that would be ideal to irrigate any four, uh, you know, four foot wide bed. So if you ever decide to design your own irrigation system um, or use any, uh, you know, a drip, a drip irrigation, uh, make sure that the first one is six inches from the side and then the rest are one foot apart. And this is how they, uh, after they are glued and put together uh, this piece, so I set build those separately, 16 of these uh, build those separately. Uh, you know, kind of messy. Uh, I mean, I think if you're an expert at gluing, if it looks nice and clean, but uh, I'm not an expert at gluing. Uh, got real dirty and real messy. Anyway, that's how they go here. We, we, we just needed a 90 degree and a, a ball valve to attach. I, I set up my ball valve vertically and a 90 degree and this is attached. Of course, this will end up being too high, so I had to cut a little bit off uh, a little bit off, so uh, uh, it's uh, that is not very high, like that. This is very high. Uh, now I did not want the line to be soil surface because I plan on raising my uh, bed with time, keep adding more and more compost. So this here was not soil level. Okay, 
So what I did is I spliced it here, and if I have to even lower it, I spliced it here, and I will put a joint, like a slip joint, uh, so that I can easily remove it, separate it, and add or increase the height or reduce the height that way. Okay, and this is how these, uh, uh, after they got attached, you see the, the ball valve is vertical and 90 degree and attach this, uh, uh, you know, lines and that's where each one of these will have its own, uh, you know, uh, drip irrigation tubing. What I used is this that uh, material that has a, an emitter that is one foot apart and rated at 0.6 uh, gallon. Okay, so uh, each bed will have four irrigation lines, and each four bed is one zone. But if I want to irrigate uh, only one out of these four, I can shut off or turn, uh, or turn on and off any of these uh, four beds in that one zone using these And that's how they look in the front. Like I said, I, they are not soil level, flush with the soil surface. Uh, because uh, I expect that my beds will uh, get taller and deeper uh, with time. And this is a short video showing you the close-up uh, with all the parts. Uh, And this is the view, so the, uh, the controller and the panel is behind me, and now I'm looking to the other end, and this is the shed that we spent uh, two weeks, two or three weeks uh, building it, uh, uh, 10 by 12 uh, new uh, shed. Um, and now that we finished with this, we're trying to, we started to refill the, uh, um, uh, the trench. And now the next step was starting to put the irrigation uh, tubing, uh, four lines per bed. Now the uh, trick is to lay, uh, unroll that uh, irrigation tubing uh, the day before. Let the warmth, let the sun loosen it. You see here these two, I just unrolled them. Whereas this one here that's laying flat, that was done the day before. You try to work with this when it's still uh, rolled up and uh, looks like a coil like that and try to roll it uh, and put it in a raised bed, uh, it's going to be a mess. So plan ahead and uh, unfold it on and the day before, especially if it's going to be a sunny day, so it's easy to, to work with. You see, now it's very easy to work with. And another tip is attach this attachment first, uh, uh, I guess the part to the holes first before you glue it uh, to the PVC tubing. That's, uh, so anyway, uh, they worked, that's easy. A lot of uh, standing up and down and kneeling and, and squeezing. And, but uh, um, only thing left to do is put uh, kink the other end and close them. Uh, well, I haven't done that yet because I need to turn on the water and flush everything and make sure they're all working before I close the ends of these four tubes. Uh, they, these uh, four lines of drip emitters are not connected uh, on the other end. They just go and they are closed on the other end. Uh, some people uh, loop them and connect them on the other end, so it's one complete system. That's up to you. And this is the panel, and this is Mr. DeVille uh, Hubbard, uh, expert, and he's been volunteered his uh, time and expertise to uh, uh, do the smart work. I did the uh, physical work, uh, uh, gluing and attaching this part. He installed uh, the, all this. So you see here, this is the 4x4 four four panel. This is the fertilizer injector. So water will be coming in from the main line, uh, uh, the irrigation line of the farm. Uh, if I need to fertilize, I drop the hose in the fertilizer uh, barrel. And this is the control panel that will control uh, the solenoid valve. Uh, and uh, showing you one zone um, finished, except for flushing it, uh, for run some water, and then close the ends. I will finish uh, the last two zones uh, after the glue. Uh, seals and dries up and then we can turn on the water and then we can finish the rest. 
So you see here are the ends, uh, we just have to close them. Now you see this little tiny piece, this uh, when, uh, when I uh, stretch the, uh, the drip line, uh, there happened to be a mirror at the very end. You don't want in a mirror at the very end because then you're watering the, uh, you know, the, the mulch, the, the mulch area, the alleyway. And since these are one foot apart, I cut that extra piece. This way, the last emitter is not at the very end, is uh, at least six inches from the edge. In my case, it is one foot, which is perfect. And that is the irrigation system. Um, uh, hopefully next time when we meet, uh, you will see, we will talk about what I planted. You will see the water running. You will see the plants growing. And uh, I'm sure we will talk more about my uh, stress and headache uh, dealing with these perennial weeds. If anybody knows what that uh, weed name is, please email me. Uh, another thing of this presentation I promise I'll talk about is uh, soil test. Uh, I took a sample of the compost and I added uh, and I made another sample by adding uh, uh, peat to it and I sent them for soil testing and, and, and compared to the native soil and that's what I want to show. So this soil test is for the compost that I'm using in my alleyways, just the pure compost. pH of 7.7, .7, that's a high. Conductivity, which is uh, all the salts, all the minerals together, that's very good. Uh, you don't want anything above uh, 12 to 1400. If you get a salt test and it's uh, 1400, uh, don't use that water, don't use that soil. It's too salty, uh, you cannot grow anything in it. And the numbers, the soil test briefly gives you your results compared to the critical level CL by numbers and by a graph. So here, uh, your results in this bold number columns it should be uh, should be you know higher than uh, the critical level that are here in parentheses, or your bar should be higher than the, the line here. Okay, so for nitrate that is low. See this, uh, your bar is uh, very low, between very low and low. You need more. But that is expected uh, for nitrate uh, because it dissolves, it moves with the water. If it rained the day before and then you added fertilizer and it rains, uh, you, you may not uh, detect any nitrate in, in the soil test. Now, there's uh, this number is below the critical level, but there's no fertilizer recommendation. And that's only because I told them no crops. I'm not planting anything. If I had said tomatoes, for example, then they will give you, you'll see a number here because the, your nitrate and your phosphorus are below the critical level. There will not be any recommendation for the rest because of the, of the salts, of these minerals, because they are at or above the critical level. Sodium is the only one that you want low, that you don't want to reach the critical level. Otherwise, that means you're, you have too much sodium chloride or other salts in your uh, soil. So, so the compost that I bought and used still has a high pH, um, relatively weak in phosphorus. Uh, I don't care about nitrate because I have to add nitrogen anyway, but uh, otherwise everything else is, all the other minerals are at soil level. What when I took compost and added a little bit of peat, it did not affect the pH. Uh, conductivity went from about 200 to 400, so that's not bad, still low. Nitrate is still low, I, I don't care, I told you don't care about that, always add nitrogen, but everything else is the same, but look, the only thing different by just by adding peat is that you gain a little bit more phosphorus that you don't have to worry about anymore, and extra, a little extra sodium, but it's still in the very low range. So compost, when you get it, and let's go back, uh, I don't know, if I, we cannot go back because uh, we're recording. Uh, compost, when you get it, it's not really the ideal uh, media, the ideal soil, because it, it still uh, needs to break down more. Um, I mean, it's ready for sale, 
in terms of physical and chemical properties, but it's not mature in the sense that a year old uh, compost versus a fresh compost, it's a big difference between the two. But just be patient. Uh, you can still grow in it. You just add your fertilizer, water regularly, and it's definitely magic. I call adding compost, it's like magic, better than not using compost at all. And uh, uh, I noticed uh, with the soil test is that the email came with a detailed description uh, of all the uh, variables that are listed uh, in the soil test, which is very nice, very nice. You don't have to go back to the soil uh, testing website uh, and then look up uh, what uh, all these uh, what all these information mean. So I applaud the soil testing for uh, lab for doing this. I'm not going to read that to you. If you get a soil test, uh, this will describe what conductivity is, what CL is, potassium, what's this element for, what's uh, desirable or not desirable, all that. Final thoughts. If you want to use compost on your native soil, use cardboard. One or two layers, uh, you, you'll be doing yourself a favor. Uh, compost with uh, cardboard with time will break down. Uh, it is not toxic, it's not going to hurt, but is the best physical barrier for all those perennial weed as you saw, will grow through one foot deep of compost or mulch. I've always told gardeners in the past that mulch, if it's less than six inches, is decoration. Uh, that's for annual weeds. For perennial weeds, you see that even one foot uh, was not enough, and some of the perennial weeds uh, poked through even one foot of compost and what for the mulch. Uh, uh, compost that you buy from the compost company is your best friend in your garden, uh, but the older it is, the more mature and the more it cooks itself and mature and ripens in the soil, the better it is, as you saw in the soil test that I showed you. Uh, does that mean you buy a pile or you buy a yard and you let it sit uh, a year before you use it? No. Just use it and fertilize and water uh, and uh, it will, uh, just growing things in it will speed up the process of maturity, of maturing of the compost, okay? And the final thought is uh, compost, the fresh compost uh, drains very fast. Whereas a compost that you put in a raised bed a year later, you'll find that it's not draining as fast. So when you buy fresh compost, you may have to water more often, more frequently, because it drains very fast until it settles and compacts well and set and all that and the roots binds and uh, uh, you know uh, together holds it together and then that does not have to drain as fast and uh, so. Uh, keep an eye on it, uh, water regularly, use a soil moisture probe uh, to see if you need to uh, water. Don't uh, judge the need to water by looking at the plants, see if they are wilted or not, because by the time they are wilted, the damage is done. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and we'll see you again uh, next month. Bye-bye.